Hi, this is Editor's Take. I am Sakshi Batra and with me is Gaurav Chaudhary. He is the Deputy Executive Editor of Money Control and we are here to discuss uh, the implications of India's decision to stay out of the RCEP agreement. Thanks a lot, Gaurav, for joining in. Now, this was a tough decision for India. It was not at all easy. But what is the economic rationale or what are the big reasons behind India's decision to stay out of this agreement? Well, the big, dis the big reason, I mean, in, uh, as it was building up, it was almost certain that India is going to uh, play, a very, uh, play very tough negotiators in the deal and the Prime Minister in, in the run-up to the uh, main summit had also said that everything has to be, uh, without actually mentioning the word RCEP, had said that trade negotiation, trade interest should be in the interest of the, uh, trade deal should be in the interest of national uh, uh, protection of na or safeguarding national interests. Uh, and we now know that the, 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 as the Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi has said, uh, that the intent of, of the deal was not really uh, in, in India's national interest. Uh, this primarily means that there was there were worries about India getting flooded by uh, products from countries such as China. Uh, say, for instance, there was a key worry that once India brings down the tariffs, uh, the deal would have meant that India had to bring down tariffs over a, a gradually over a, a period of 15 to 20 years on 90 percent of its products. That right. would have meant that that could have meant that India uh, would have been flooded with a surge of imports, of cheap imports from countries such as China, so in, including products such as steel and textiles, right. uh, that, and also electronic items. So that, that was one part of it. But there was another part of it and which concerned farmers, particularly dairy farmers. And that, that worry was that Indi the Indian uh, dairy market would be completely flooded with imports from New Zealand and Australia, uh, more so from New Zealand. Right. And that has been building up for several months now that India cannot allow the local dairy farmers to get affected. Uh, dairy, as we know, is a, is a so-called crop in India in the sense that it is harvested daily and everything uh, in the income comes in, unlike say paddy or weight, the, uh, for dairy, for milk products, uh, the income comes in almost daily, which is a, a, which is a big benefit for those who are not cultivating uh, you know, traditional products such as, paddy, uh, such as paddy or wheat. Now, if they were, were to be squeezed out of the market because of a flood of cheap imports, uh, particularly in milk solids such as uh, cheese and, uh, and butter, etc., uh, and also uh, milk powder, that would have created a lot of, uh, that could have led to all kinds of consequences. Yeah. Uh, also, it was building up as a big political issue, and the BJP's, uh, the BJP's own ideological found uh, the Swadeshi Jagran Manch, which is the economic wing of, wing of, of the Sangh Parivar, had also put up a strong resistance and opposition to India getting into an RCEP deal that could have endangered or that could have, you know, uh, endangered the livelihood of millions of dairy farmers. Right. Absolutely. But what signal does it really send to all the other nations? And do you think India's geopolitical ambitions would be hit because of this? Uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see because what we now know is that India has the option of joining the deal sometime in February when the deal is going to be formally signed. Okay. The RCEP deal, the Regional Comprehensive uh, Economic Corporate, uh, Partnership Agreement actually stands. It stands uh, it will now stand among 15 nations instead of 16. So India yes. has pulled out of it. Uh, India has the option of joining that, but I don't think it's going to happen that soon because India has taken a position uh, that many of the many of the details or many of the clauses that were factored into the deal was not acceptable. Say, mm. for instance, uh, what was uh, what is called the base year tariff, the base yeah. tariff year. Now, India wanted the base tariff year to be set at 2019. Uh, but the proposal in the RCEP deal, what we understand was that to set it at 2013, that was the year when negotiations actually started. And between 2013 and 19, uh, import tariffs on, on many products that India has uh, imports have uh, gone up. So India wanted uh, 2019 uh, to be the base year on grounds. The logic is, the reasoning is that this is the year when the deal is actually going to be signed, yeah. if at all it's going to be formalized. So that should be the base year instead of something of six years before, earlier than that. Uh, that was one part of it. There, the other, another problem was also, another uh, thorny issue was also yeah. what is called the auto trigger mechanism in which countries should have been given uh, the yeah. right to you know, uh, erect protective mechanism if there's a surge in flood of imports. And there's also something called the Rashid obligations. Rashid obligations imply that uh, uh, once uh, uh, tariffs are brought down or duties are cut, import yeah. duties are cut, yeah. then companies, uh, the, then countries are not allowed to, you know, resign or roll back the cuts. In the, in the, again, raise tariffs uh, just for 
protecting their own industries. India wanted exemptions to that. And also there were issues on data localization or data privacy, which uh, clearly there were a lot of disagreements over. So I don't think uh, having taken the, such a uh, hardened position, uh, I don't think India will join the RCEP uh, deal as soon as February next year. Uh, but having said that, so far as the geopolitical implications of this is concerned, and, yeah. and particularly concerning India, I think India will now shift the priority, shift the focus on uh, actually formalizing or trying to, you know, iron out all the rough edges on the, in the proposed Indo-US deal. I think the priority will now move more from RCEP towards the front of US. Exactly, and that is what I wanted to understand. What are the broad implications as far as the trade agreements are now concerned for India now? So this this was supposed to be the world's biggest uh, trade agreement. Mm. I do not know whether that will stand, given the fact that India, the second most populous country in the world, has actually pulled out of the deal. Uh, and uh, so, uh, having said that, the ten ASEAN nations and 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 the five other countries, including uh, China, in, including China, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, mm. and Korea, uh, mm. minus India, will still be a very large trading bloc. Right. Uh, and India has a, India has a, has already has an FTA with the ten ASEAN countries. Uh, so to that extent, India, I do not think will have to, uh, you know in in terms of trade, there'll be uh, in terms of trade or in terms of. Uh, you know, geopolitical implications so far as movement of goods and services are concerned, I don't think there's going to be any immediate impact. Okay. But as I said before, I think India will now shift the priority towards bilateral trade treaties, sure. particularly with countries, and also try to improve its uh, bilateral <laughs> trade relations with China, where the trade, uh, uh, the trade, de India, the trade deficit is very heavily loaded right. against India. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, then, Gaurav, for sharing all that insight. Well, the government also believes that this uh, decision that they have taken is in the interest of our national and domestic industries. And apart from that, if you see Prime Minister Narendra Modi also in his opening remarks uh, while in the summit did say that this will also mean a balanced trade, uh, you know, with bilateral trade uh, relations where, that will seek to build with other countries and other nations also from here on. Thanks a lot for joining us in this edition of Editors Take and do stay logged on to moneycontrol.com for more news and updates. Thanks for watching.